Uh, yes, so I would say we're very happy that in uh, three months since November 15th, uh, we've managed to, let's say, link in six cities, um, some of them which are very prestigious uh, cities, um, and also, of course, raising a total organizational fund plus prize money of 2.1 million euros. So, of course, you can imagine that this is not an easy task to do. Since November 15th, I've been traveling around quite some time, uh, meeting countries, uh, discussing uh, you know, how we could get around to finalizing. Um, still, of course, things are coming in place, and still we hope you know, that uh, this first edition uh, will serve to uh, put lots of things you know, on the plate for future editions. Um, and we've had some suggestions as we've been going along, but now things have been finalized. End of January, we put forward the six cities. Um, end of February, we've now had all the player preferences come in, including you know, some changes in uh, nominations as some players uh, could not participate either due to personal reasons or for any other reasons that they wished. Uh, we then, of course, had to change with other players and submit undertakings plus um, their preferences for the cities that they would have loved to play in. So the seven from rating who were originally chosen following uh, the criteria were Morozovic, uh, Mamedyarov, Rajabov, uh, Ivanchuk, Aronian, Gelfen and Leko. Now Morozovic, of course, uh, decided not to participate, so the first reserve, in, according to rating, was Michael Adams. Um, uh, Michael Adams, of course, has given his preferences as well. So he's the seventh player coming through the rating system. We then had four players, or three players actually, coming directly from Hantimansisk, but we had four players who are now in matches. Out of the four players in matches, um, the key players, basically, Kramnik Anand and Topalov, felt that their schedule this year is pretty tough with the matches coming up. And given that the, they have to play four tournaments out of six, uh, they felt that this was not exactly, I would say, the best timing for this particular area. Kamsky, on the other hand, has confirmed his participation. Out of the Huntiman Sisk three other semi-finalists, uh, Shirov has withdrawn for his own personal reasons um, uh, very currently, I would say. He first originally intended to participate, but then uh, decided to withdraw. So his place has now been taken by Alexander Grischuk. And the two other players, uh, basically Sergei Karyakin and Magnus Carlsen, have accepted to play. So this leaves then uh, the president nomination, which was uh, originally won, which was Peter Zwidler, but because of the then the uh, re sort of the problems with, of course, Anand Kramnik and Topolov, uh, he had three other nominations, which went to uh, Ivan Cheparinov, who currently is rated 27.13, Wang Yu from China, who's 26.98, and. Um, uh, player number three is at Yen Bakro from France at 2700 rating, so quite a formidable field. The average rating of all 21 players in the field is 2710, and uh, all the tournaments are working more or less around this number with slight variances, of course, because it's impossible to balance perfectly uh, who plays where exactly. Some players had certain preferences. We've observed uh, around 90% of the player preferences. So uh, we've adopted the policy of starting from the bottom rating upwards and shifting so that we balance with 14 players per tournament out of the 21. The Grand Prix as a, as a tournament uh, system, as a tournament cycle, gives the opportunity for many other strong players, let's say, to reduce the risk of a knockout. Uh, because, of course, you get one bad game in a knockout. Uh, you could be a very talented player, you have no alternative chance. Whereas with the Grand Prix, you are effectively playing 52 games. So as a strong player, if you really have a, a one-off game, it's not going to influence you that much. OK, let's have a look at the, the criticism Moroz, which actually uh, uh, sp spoke uh, in a recent interview. First, he said uh, it's actually taking four years to uh, reach the World Championship match. What do you think of this? Well, the way it works is like this, that after the two-year cycle of the Grand Prix and also the World Cup, which is every two years, the two winners have to play a match. Um, now, the only issue is that currently what is happening is that these matches, after the two winners are found out, which in this case would be December, let's say, um, they are taking, let's say, eight to nine months to organize. So in this case, you would have the challenge match being played in the September of the following year which means there's no way that they would then play another match immediately after this. So the four years is logical if you have such a cycle. If you want it to be idealistic, you could say, look, immediately after the December, uh, three months afterwards, you could organize the match of the challenge, and six months after this, you could organize the World Championship match. And 
it would be a three-year cycle. So in reality, it depends upon what people are comfortable. To date, FIDA has said we prefer to have a system whereby the match happens, you know, the challenge match happens in one year after the Grand Prix, you know, and World Cup are over, and the year after that, we have the main World Championship match. Okay. Um, a second uh, point he mentioned was that uh, there will be f four more tournaments, and for a lot of players, this is just too much in their individual tournament well, schedule. This depends upon each individual players. You know, I mean, uh, for his schedule, this could be too much. You know, in reality, uh, the four tournaments wasn't too much for most of these because it's actually not four tournaments; it's two tournaments a year. Um, and some suggestions were made, uh, for example, uh, even today the, I had an interesting point uh, where Veselin Topalov said to me, you know, sort of, I wouldn't remove the, the fourth tournament, you know, because there were certain people who said, why don't we just do it three and we get the three results, whatever the results may be. You know, if you're off in one tournament, you have your fourth tournament, because in actual fact we're ranking three tournaments, your best three tournaments as a player. So the, the issue there is very clearly, do you go for three and you say it's just three and no four tournament, which means there's less commitment from the players. But then on the other hand, there are certain players who prefer to have this fourth one as a measure that if they do have a bad tournament, you know, then you have this uh, as a cover. Yes. Okay, the last thing, uh, was my, perhaps the most serious uh, point of criticism, he said, I can't sign a contract in which it's still very vague uh, when the tournaments actually will be and where they will be, it's not settled yet. Well, the tournaments were announced at the end of January, and uh, we put it clearly in the undertaking, in the players' undertaking, there's a clear perspective from FIDA, which FIDA always does, whether it's World Cup, and of course Morozovic has participated in the World Cup, you know, um, including Mexico, including any tournament, FIDA always uh, specifies that it reserves the right to change the dates and the location. So in reality, it's not an unusual clause. Uh, Morozovic asked for certain guarantees, which FIDA gave him, you know, saying, look, the dates will not change by more uh, than, let's say, uh, one week plus or minus on this. Secondly, that there would be two months' notice prior to the tournament. So FIDA gave him this. At the end of the day, what we also explained clearly is that the calendar is so tight, we cannot allow a change of dates. Uh, regarding location, of course, Krasnoyarsk was great. Now the Russian Federation has offered to host with Sochi. Krasnoyarsk was also their original um, suggestion. Uh, but they were, of course, looking for a city. And uh, at that point in time, when we had to launch the Grand Prix system, uh, we were f f fully dependent upon what they were going to give us as a city. So um, at the end of the day, I respect, you know, Grandmaster Morozovich's uh, opinions. Um, you know, uh, we will, of course, uh, organize the Grand Prix. This is the first of such a series. Um, it will be, of course, very important so that we get established uh, cycle in place. We've announced the dates for the six tournaments, you know, round by round, so that even organizers can plan easily into 2009. 2008 was touch and go, very difficult to plan dates because so many tournaments are already existing. 2009, we've set the scene so that we can help organizers and we don't clash, and we obviously give maximum opportunity to professional chess players. All right. So this is all very uh, uh, positive, I think, but of course there's still a lot of uh, skepticism. Um, so what are the chances that FIDA doesn't have to uh, cancel tournaments at some point? Uh, what are the chances that this cycle will actually be a success, do you think? Okay, well, the 2008-09 cycle is now in place. Of course, our commitment with FIDA is for six years. Uh, so of course, the first two are in place. At the same time, uh, whilst we were going around and visiting cities and meeting up and so on, we've established, let's say, the seeds also for introducing exactly the same sort of cycle for women, which is also very positive because, of course, we do a lot for men, uh, but we need to start, of course, also pushing, you know, uh, the other side as well so that they get an equal opportunity to play and get uh, good quality tournaments. And uh, again, uh, so the opportunity there is great. The six cities are very easy. Of course, the cost of organizing the women's tournament is uh, slightly lower than the men's tournament. Um, the men's tournament is in place, and it's our duty to make it a success. Because, of course, in forthcoming tournaments, if we make it a success now, uh, organizers will either approach us again, or alternatively, you know, you will get much easier access uh, towards organizational uh, funds. So in reality, no. I mean, I would say right now it looks pretty good because keep in mind, November 15th is when we got going. January 30th, we are 31st, we already had the six cities. Some of them were a bit shaky. Uh, 15 days later, we firmed them up. 
Okay, 15 days after this, we finalized with the players. So I would say that's pretty good going, you know, in, in a matter of two, two and a half months, three months, you know, of hard work, okay, but at least it gave the results. And similarly, you know, it will give results on other front. All right, congratulations. And Thank you. Uh, good luck with uh, organizing them. Uh, Definitely. Thank you.